everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're here for another live tech demo. Uh, thanks everybody for joining in. Uh, as usual, we have all the products that we're going to be talking about uh, below the screen that you're watching here. So you can check out any of those products, get some great deals. And we're also going to be uh, recording this. So anybody that might have missed it can find it on our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can also find it on this landing page here if you need to tune out or tell any of your friends. So we're going to be talking today about stripping paint and surface rust. It's something that's a really easy, common thing that everybody's doing, whether you're doing auto body repair or you're doing a full-blown restoration. This is something you're going to run into. Now, there's a, there's a lot of mistakes that you can make that can cause you a lot more work. And there's also some things you can do that can save you some time. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with the boring stuff first, the safety, of course. This is something that's dangerous uh, with a lot of things you're doing, and you're also doing some chemicals and things like that, so uh, you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. So first thing that a lot of people might forget about is one of these face shields here that we have available. Uh, this is just a simple uh, flip-down face shield that you can wear so that you can, you can save your face uh, aside from your eyes. You can save your whole entire face and neck area from getting uh, hurt when you're, when you're using some of these tools here. Now the other thing, obvious pair of safety glasses so I wear these at the minimum and you wear this over top just for uh, you know added protection it really is good for some of this stuff and uh, the last couple things of course is a pair of, if you're doing grinding and things like that you want to use a good pair of leather gloves and then also if, if you're doing a lot of grinding and sanding one of these little face masks here so these these are good to have around and when you're doing a lot of sanding, there's the particles that are going in the air, you're breathing those in. Those are really, really not good for your body. And over a period of time, it's, it's going to uh, be very harmful to you. So when I'm doing the light grinding today, so you guys can hear me talking, I'm not going to wear this because I'm only going to be grinding for a couple seconds at a time. But like I said, if you're, if you're doing an extended period of grind, stripping a whole hood or a panel, you definitely need this. So uh, now that we got over the boring stuff, let's get into the, the different methods. I'm going to go from the most simple up onto the, some of the methods you may not be familiar with. So the most simple thing is just using a block sander. So we sell these Dura blocks like this, and so I just have some sticky 80 grit paper attached to it. So this is the method that a lot of people do. It's not going to require anything extra than your, uh, your two hands and the block sander. So this is 80 grit I have on here, and most of the products that we're showing you today are available in 80 grit, so I'm going to go over them just so that you can see the difference in how much effort and time it takes to strip each of these uh, different methods. So with this, I'm going to go over here to this little corner of the hood that we're using. This is an old uh, Monte Carlo hood that we have. It's had a bunch of different coats of paint on it. This has had the original coat. It had some additional coats. There's even been some test spray um, on here for when uh, one of the guys was painting a, a Monte Carlo. He wanted to test spray it. So this is a true test of what you're going to come across, a vehicle that has many layers of paint on top of it. So. And this little square here, like Kevin uh, had showed you guys before, doing the crosshatch pattern, you know, it's the same thing. But we'll do just a quick sanding. So you can see that. In that amount of time, I counted maybe the 20 or 30 seconds there, um, if that. We didn't get very far. We got through one layer of paint, and we're down into the white that's underneath. There's probably another coat or two that's underneath of that even further. Um, and you're going to be changing your paper if it's, if it's some kind of, uh, depending on the paint and what's underneath, you're going to be gumming your paper up. So this is really good for when you're block sanding your primer and things like that. But it's really not that great for stripping paint. I would avoid using this if you have to strip a car down to bare metal. So next thing is... Uh, same kind of idea, but using a DA, dual action sander like this. This is one of our larger ones we offer. We also have a palm sander. So this one's pneumatic. It works off your airline. Um, so I'll show you this one here. So I'm going to put some glasses on now that we're spinning. And obviously the grits come in whatever, you know, whatever you want. I, again, I have 80 on just to show you, um, you know, to be a comparable test here. Uh, but you can get this in 40, it does rip a little bit further, but it's still a similar, similar uh, speed as the block sanding. So with this, obviously, you're going to be... So 
there about a similar amount of time. You can see I went through the coats of paint, so we went through the top black. There's a white underneath, it's underneath the single stage urethane. Another coat, there's a primer. Um, you can see basically the rings of the different coats of, uh, of primer and paint that's on there. And we got down to bare metal. So definitely a lot quicker. Um, but when you're doing a large panel, you're going to be changing these paper, the paper pretty often. And depending on the size of your compressor, we have a pretty good compressor here, so we could keep up with this all day long. But if you have a smaller compressor, you're not going to get that kind of output that fast, and it's going to slow down. Um, and again, you're going to be changing the paper pretty often, especially if you're trying to do a big hood like this. So that's the dual action sander. Again, these are good for other types of you know, body work, but for stripping a car down to bare metal, um, it's really not that optimal. And I wouldn't suggest that unless it's all you had around. So a lot of the other items we're going to be talking about, some of my favorite items are going to be using um, an electric, a four and a half inch electric angle grinder like we sell. Um, these ones are pretty well used. These are the ones I use all the time in the shop. And uh, so we have these and I'm going to show you something that's a, a common one that people tend to use that really isn't that great. It's a great tool, but this isn't really for this job, um, a flat disc. So these flat discs are items that we sell on the website. Um, they have the, the edges laid over top of them like that, of little pieces of paper glued and over top of them. And this one here, um, I have, this one's actually a 40 grit instead of an 80. Um, and these are, are really abrasive. They cut really fast. The bad thing about them is, is that they actually cut almost too, they're too aggressive for stripping paint. Um, if you're doing some surface rust or you're, or you're flattening out welds, things like that, these are really great. If you're doing welding, keep these right next to you because these are perfect for knocking down those proud welds. This is exactly what you need. But I will show you on this hood. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna try and got, not go too aggressive on it because we don't want to wreck this hood because somebody might want to use it at some point. But with these, a the bad thing is you can push pretty hard with these, um, pretty hard without realizing it, and you can actually put grooves in the metal. And the, uh, the grooves in the metal, obviously, you're going to have uh, to sand those out. Just pardon me while I set all this up here. And uh, for this one, I'm going to start wearing the face shield because we're getting into something that's more aggressive. And, uh, you know, we don't want throwing things at ourselves. So I hope you guys can hear me. So, and let me get my gloves here now that we're getting into this. All right. Like I said, face mask is good for this part, or uh, the dust mask is good for this, but we're just doing a quick part and I want you guys to be able to hear me immediately afterwards. So. So you can see how quickly we, uh, we stripped that down the bare metal. That was pretty darn fast. But you can definitely see the difference in the profile. If you look at the, the metal between this and then when we were doing with the DA, those little, those little scratches there, I was barely pressing down. You press any harder, you're going to really start digging into the metal. Um, the more you dig into the metal, the more work it's going to take to get that, to get that flat and straight. It's really, it's really easy with that tool when you're stripping a large panel to press too hard and you're going to get waves in your panel at the end. Even though you may prime it, do high build primer and everything like that, may get waves because you're actually pushing them, digging little tiny grooves in the metal as you go. So I wouldn't suggest this. If you're really delicate like I was, you can strip a panel, but when you get start getting close to, uh, to body lines and edges here, you can actually grind through the metal really fast. So if I, if I even touched or sanded the edge of this hood here, I could break that edge real fast and have a hole in the metal and you know, have a big problem. So like I said, that's, that's a good tool, but not great for what we're doing here. Um, I, the next one we're going to talk about is probably one of my favorites. Um, let me just change handles here. Uh, it's our, what we call our cleaning discs. So I'll get the Randy to zoom in there on that while I, I change over here. Um, those, those cleaning discs are like a woven material that they're made out of. The really good thing about those um, is that they don't fly apart so easy. Uh, if you ever used wire wheels or things like that before, they tend to, uh, to fly apart, shoot pieces at you. Those things stick together pretty good, which is a good part of that. Sorry, we uh, should have got two extension cords here set up. But the way that those actually attach is they use this uh, 
a hook and loop style backing pad. So they're pretty quick to, uh, to attach. And the, ne the, the next two we're actually talking about use this style. So these things just stick on. They come in this four and a half inch uh, size and then we offer off, uh, also offer them in the, uh, the seven inch that you could see when Randy was zooming over those. Um, so these things rip pretty good. They leave uh, about an 80 grit finish on the metal, about the equivalent. And uh, you stick them on like that. It's kind of like a Velcro, the hook and loop. And then you're ready to go. So I'll do a quick section with that and uh, show you what, what it's like when you're using this on a panel. And you can see how quickly this is going to strip through all the, uh, all the metal or all the, all the layers of paint at least. <laughs> There was a cleaning disc. You'd see how quickly, uh, you know, that took away the paint. And you compare that, you know, to the uh, to the block sander we started in the beginning. This is a, a whole world of difference. You know, we we would probably still be sanding this first patch, um, this first square we made, if we were using the, the uh, block sander versus the, uh, the the cleaning disc. So the cleaning disc, like I said, is is a little better. Notice when I was doing that, um, I didn't really stop moving along the way. That's one of the key things when you're stripping paint. Um, you want to keep moving when you're stripping the paint. You don't want to sit in one spot because what will happen is you can actually heat up the metal and that can start to warp the metal. So any of you guys or gals out there, you know, with welding, you weld a panel too much in, in one spot, it's going to warp. You know, you can do the same thing with a grinder almost as quickly. So be mindful when you're, when you're sanding that you're continuously moving at all times. Let the panel cool. The panel should always be, before you start grinding again, you should be able to touch it with your bare hands like this. So this one's just a little warm to touch. If it's hot where you can't touch it, then you, you need to stop. You need to walk away, get a drink, whatever, come back, work another pair of the, part of the car. That, that's very important because you can warp these panels uh, pretty easily. So that's these cleaning discs. Um, and these things stick pretty good. Of course, now I can't get this one off very easily. So you can see the force taken to, to remove those. Now here's one that's, the cool thing I grabbed is I wanted to show you guys some used ones. These are how these, uh, these cleaning discs actually wear. You can see it's kind of like a cone shape. That's because you tend to be using the edge pretty often. Um, if you're mindful about how you keep the, uh, the cleaning disc angled when you're grinding or, or uh, stripping, uh, you, can, you can pretty much have these wear a little pretty evenly and make them last. If you're really hard on this edge, you're going to wear it really quickly and then it's not going to be as useful. So try and keep it fairly flat as much as you can. It'll wear much more uh, evenly and you'll get a lot more use out of it. But that's what they look like. That, that one's about shot. Your, this center here area is the center that's uh, you know, right over the axle, the drive of this, and, it, and it's not going to, uh, it's going to throw your arms around when you try to sand with that. So that's that one. And then we have here um, is our stripping discs. So these are like little, uh, little um, Brillo pads on steroids, basically. So these again work with the uh, with the hook and loop style, the same backing pads. So we have these uh, four and a half inch and seven inch backing pads. Grab one of the, you know one of each, and you'll be good to go. You can grab uh, grab throw this on here, and you can switch between these two. I usually like to use this uh, cleaning disc first, and then follow it up with this to clean any of the metal afterwards. But I'll show you just from scratch what these can do. Um, and the difference. They work uh, when they're brand new. It's a similar fashion, but these don't hold up quite as long as those, uh, those cleaning discs do. So, got that on there, and uh, we'll show in the next, next little square here what this, uh, the stripping disc can do. So you can see a similar amount of time. 
I would start to hit the bare metal, but not nearly as quick. The good thing what I would use this for is, uh, you know, like I said, we use that other, the cleaning disc there, and then you have some areas here in the center. We don't need to necessarily work them all with the cleaning disc. You can follow it up with this. You can get the panel, kind of most of the, the uh, paint removed, and then follow through with this. So what I'll do is come back with this. You couple these two together. They can get down the bare metal pretty quickly and clean and nice clean metal. So this is good to follow up after the first one that we showed you uh, to take out any of the grooves, you know, smooth it, smooth it out a little bit. I use this a lot when you're doing if you're doing a part where you did some welding and uh, you grind it smooth with the flap disc. You can follow it up with these, um, just kind of to blend the whole entire area. And you can do a little bit of metal finishing if you want to get into some of that and really make an invisible weld. This is nice to follow up and give an even finish. Um, but these things, when they wear, these actually get, I don't know if you'll be able to see the light through it, but these start to get paper thin um, when they start to wear. And this happens really fast if you're stripping uh, paint off. So these, we offer a kit that comes with the backing pad, it comes with this, and it comes in these heavier uh, the cleaning pads, a cleaning disc, um, together in a kit. That's what I'd really suggest getting is getting one of those kits and then buying a, a bunch of these, uh, these discs. And then you can strip, uh, you know, coupling those together, you can really do a, an efficient job when you're stripping. Another cool one uh, that we're going to move on to here 